Hi, my name is Nancy Rasmussen of PlentyOfPatterns.com. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a simple stained glass copper foil piece. Okay, so step one. Your inspiration all begins with a pattern. Where are you going to find that pattern? You can go online, you can get a book, or you could draw your own. Step three, let's see how your glass looks with the light shining through. You can either put them up against the window or you can use a light table. Okay, we've moved over to my prepared working table now. I have two sets of the pattern ready to go. One of them you're going to put onto your work board. I use the Morton system. Um, it comes with various lengths of a metal straight edge and tacks. You just put them around the outside of your pattern. If you don't have the Morton system, um, thin strips of wood nailed down would work as well. With the second copy of our pattern, I've used regular scissors to cut around the outside. And then we have our special copper foil scissors that have got um, double blades and a, gr a little groove that when you're cutting out your pattern, it will cut it in such a manner that when you actually um, foil your pieces, they will not get too large for the pattern. It compensates, so these are very important. If you don't have the special sears with regular scissors, I would suggest that you actually make two cuts, one on each side of the black line. Otherwise, you're going to find that your piece will get too tight. Okay, so step five. Uh, cut all the pieces out. Um, when I cut them, it was the easiest method is to just keep them beside the pattern so that you kind of keep track of things. I find that I love gluing the pattern pieces onto the glass. It's such an easy way to know that you're cutting them correctly. I just use really inexpensive children's glue sticks. You put a little bit on and then you just take the pattern piece and you adhere it. Um, sorry, I just this one's going down here. Um, of course, you want to make the best use of your glass so that when you're making your cuts, things make sense and you're not wasting, and and you can minimize the amount of cuts that you're doing. So um, if there's a straight edge, easier to already put it on a straight edge, and then you don't have to cut that. In this particular project, I am using a lot of scraps, and with small projects, you can you'll find that you can do that. So I, it doesn't stick too tight, too fast. So if you need to make a few adjustments, that's okay. The next thing to watch for when you're using different textures of glass, this is a water glass, which means it has waves. I want to know that the waves are going the right direction. So when you're gluing your piece on. If you want the texture that way, make sure you put your piece that way and that you don't glue them incorrectly. With this yellow glass, it's very, very textured. So you'll notice I've actually glued the pattern pieces on upside down so you can't see the numbers. Reason for that, it's very smooth on this side. So when I cut it, it's going to cut easily. It would be very difficult. This is very bumpy for me to cut this on the correct side. So that's okay. Glue them the wrong way and then we're going to be making our cuts on the back side of this piece. Okay, step six is cutting the glass. So most important on this is actually your safety glasses. Wear them at all times. The glass can shard and you don't want stuff in your eyes. So I use the Morton system again. I love this cutting board. There's all these nice little holes and grids so that you can line things up and all the little bits of glass fall into it. I've used other things prior to discovering this but I would say this is the best if you could if you can get your hands on one. This is a straight edge that is part of the system just to show you how to make a straight cut. You just push down. Again there's many fancy ways to snap a piece of glass. I often just hit it because the glass is a lot easier to 
bring apart than you realize. Okay, so this is one of our pieces for the uh, for the pattern. I'll just move this out of the way for the sake of the demonstration. I don't think we'll be needing that. So as you can see, the grids and the pattern. This is cutting oil. I don't like using it in the cylinder. I just find it gets mucky. So I just put a little bit in my in my jar and I dip and I always just have a little piece of paper on my working area. Nothing fancy. Roll off most of the oil. It just keeps your wheel lubricated and makes your tools last longer. So you just start and you push. You hear that nice little sound and it snaps off. To make curves, again, just a really nice, um, quite a hard pressure, but not so hard that it's not, I don't know how to explain. You get the feel of it as you go along. And different glasses take different pressure. These are just grosing pliers, lots of varieties of grosing pliers. I like these little guys. You just go snap and snap. Throw your junk in a little bin. And again, just keep on going. You can see now the beauty of having a pattern stuck onto your glass. I mean, I'm able to do this in one cut. If you're just a beginner, you may want to, you know, take bites, they call it, where you take out sections, but you can see how easy that came apart anyway. So that piece is cut and ready for the grinder. I'm just going to show you the yellow. This is the one that has the very um, bumpy texture on the good side, so I'm cutting it on the opposite side. I like to lay things up so that I get maximum use out of my glass and use the straight edges wherever I can. I find if you first just section it, so right now I'm just sectioning this from this, give it a little snap, comes apart. It's very, very easy to do really once you get the hang of it. That's a thicker glass. I can feel the thickness. It's a little bit harder to cut than the other one was. So you just have to be patient. Make sure your scores are strong. When it comes to circles, you kind of have to take bites. This may or <clears throat> may not work um, without me breaking it. If I do break it, I just start again. So don't feel bad about it. You may break pieces. So these are just taking bites, kind of little half moons because there's no way I'm going to be able to get that section out all with one cut. Just keep biting it off. First time I ever saw someone cut a circle, I thought they were a genius. I didn't think it was possible, but you know, the more practice you have working with glass, you can see it's making a little crack, it's coming apart, then the easier it gets to be over time. Keep biting this in again. When you get to a point, if you feel like, ooh, I just can't make it, it's going to break the glass, then that's why we have a grinder. It's forgiving, and you can get rid of the rest of it with your grinder. Little bites, little bites. That's probably as far as I'm going to take that. I'll grind the rest of this one off. Like I say, this is a much more difficult piece of glass to work with because of the texture. Okay, so again, bite and bite. Grosing pliers are great. I mean, I have all these other wonderful snapping tools, but I don't know, this is fast and easy once you get used to it and you don't have to spend a lot of money on a lot of the tools. As a beginner, you tend to buy everything because you think that you need it all, but you don't really. Okay, so... That's a really beautiful piece, actually, that's cut really nice and close. Okay, we'll go to the next part here. Okay, so step seven is the grinding. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it before I turn it on because it's going to make a bit of noise. Um, the pieces that we've cut out, your grind, I use a um, glass star grinder. There's many varieties. There's water in the grinder, sponge is wet. Um, I bring my pieces over. I like to use a three quarter inch head mostly. This one also has a one quarter inch head on the top. You can get various sizes, but it's handy having more than one size for small areas. So um, 
you're just going to turn the grinder on and again you see the beauty of this paper on there we're just going to go around and we're going to grind up all the excess glass this is called a cookie <laughs> it's just a device used you can do with your bare hands there's many pushing tools this is the one that's just my favorite so um, <laughs> So you can see that's all nicely ground. I'm just going to throw this one in my, I have water set up beside me all the time. It's just to loosen the glue. So I'm going to throw that one in there while I work on the second piece. You can see there's more shape so it's taking more work to just kind of go in slowly keep grinding away till you get to your pattern done I stick that one in the water and this one will be nice and loose by now so I'm just washing off the paper and the glue I know this is number 19 on my pattern so I just wash it off dry it off with a towel and we just do this to all the pieces I like to work in color batches generally I do it each color and bring it over onto the pattern so that's where we'll go to next So the second part of grinding the pieces is of course putting them onto the pattern. Um, I would be doing this as I go so that I know what number. This is a very simple pattern so it's pretty easy. If you have a couple hundred pieces obviously you're going to be doing them as you go. So this is our pattern coming together. Oh I see I'm going to have to grind that one down just a touch more. That's fine. So. This will be all, well, finish cutting and grinding this, and when we come back to it, we'll be putting the copper foil on. Step eight. So the next thing we have to do is put our copper foil around each piece. Copper foil comes in packages like this on rolls. Um, I'm going to suggest that you use 7 32nd inch. It's a little bit wider, so easier to use on some of the wider pieces. Um, I like using black back. There's also copper back, but the reason I use black back is I always finish my pieces with black, so this doesn't show when it's done. So this is a self-adhesive product. So all you do is you get it started, and you take one of your pieces, and I use my shirt a lot, but some people have little fancy rags for everything. I, that's why I wear an apron. I dust it off, make sure there's not a lot of, of um, uh, powder on the piece from grinding it. And then I like to start near, I'll call it a corner. And you put the piece on and you pinch it down on both sides. Now the, there's many tools again for doing this. I like just doing it by hand and eyeballing it. When you're doing it, you have to look down and you want to see that you have the same amount of foil on this side as this side. So you just lightly go around a section of it, making sure, you know, just kind of glancing side to side, 
making sure it's even on both sides. The better you put your foil, the better the solder goes on, the nicer it looks. It's kind of a very important stage. So then with your warm fingers, you just kind of bend the foil in. Just lightly bend it down. And you're going to wrap the whole piece like that, doing sort of one little section at a time on the corners. Make sure you fold it over, bend it down, and roll a little bit. Again, like I say, watching that it's similar on both sides. Just do the best you can with it. Worst case scenario, if you mess it up, you can always just pull it off and try another piece. It's not that expensive of a product. If you waste a little bit, that's okay. Um, as in any craft, practice makes perfect. It takes time to get all of these techniques to a point where you're really comfortable with them. So this is where we started. So this is where we end. I like ending on a, a join. So you just rip it off. Pinch it down. The one tool we use with this is called a FID. There's wooden ones and plastic ones. Now that you have it um, pushed on with your fingers, you're going to go around with the FID and you're going to push down pretty hard. You just want to make sure there aren't any air bubbles under the copper foil. And you just carry on. Doing all the bits, get one side done, flip it over, and you do the other side. Okay, so that's your finished piece. If where you started, sometimes as we call it a little tail, a little piece that's not quite lined up, you just take an X-Acto knife and you're just going to cut that little tiny bit off. That's going to make for a nicer... Uh, line when you do your soldering. So this process will be done on all of these pieces and we'll just carry on with that and then the next thing we'll do is I'll show you the next steps so we'll come back to that. Hi, step nine. We're going to solder the piece now. I use surgical gloves because we're working with toxic materials here now. Um, you need your soldering iron. It's heated, ready to go. You need to wet your sponge for this. Um, that will be a part of keeping the soldering iron clean. Okay. I have some glass star flux and I like to put a little bit into a container so I don't contaminate what's in the jar in case I don't use it all. And 60-40 solder is good for copper foiling. Okay, so you're just going to put a little bit of flux on the areas where the joins are. And you're going to tack solder these bits. The iron is very hot, keep that in mind. You just want to put a tiny bit of solder and just melt it on. Don't touch the glass. You can crack the glass at this stage. So this is all you do. You don't worry about it being fancy. You're just tack soldering. Okay, we have it tack soldered together. and Now we're going to solder the entire piece of glass. Uh, you will not do any soldering at the edges because there's going to be a frame that goes on here. So don't go in any further than a quarter of an inch to the piece. Put a bit of flex on the area that you're soldering. Then you take your soldering iron. This is the reason for the wet sponge. It just keeps um, any additional um, solder off of it. So you just go to the area, make a nice bead as you are soldering. Nice rounded top. Go slowly. So you see I'm not going any closer to the edge than there because I know I'm going to frame it. Again, do not touch the glass. I've had pieces where I've gotten right to the end and gotten a big crack and you're, it's, uh, and it's soldering as I say. Uh, this is another one of those things where practice is required to get comfortable 
with soldering it uh, if you have an area that's just not working don't keep going back while the solder is hot again it'll heat up everything too much and you can crack the glass so if there's a problem area just come back to it once the solder has cooled down um, you just again next area put your flap okay so now we're just going to continue on until the piece is finished okay so when we have it completely soldered on the front side you're going to remove two sides of your frame and you're going to flip it over and you're going to solder the back side so I have my frame cut to the desired lengths you take some steel wool and you clean it off uh, the patina which we're going to put at the end won't adhere well to the zinc unless you use some steel wool this is a stone and just do your edges as well so that they're not rough put your piece together on your working table this is the reason I left the two edges is it just makes it easy to do a nice square Step 12, washing the piece. It's covered with flux residue, so I just use simple dish soap of any variety. And I use a soft brush, and I just proceed to wash the flux off on both sides. And I will dry the piece, and then we'll move on. Step 13, patina. I like to use a black patina on mine. You just put some patina onto your stained glass piece. It's highly corrosive. You definitely want to wear gloves and you'll just paint it on or you can use a cloth to rub it on. Do your entire piece on both sides. Okay, so we've completed putting the patina and now we have to do a final wash of our stained glass piece. So we submerse it back in the water. Don't rub too hard. You don't want to be um, scratching the patina off of the zinc frame. You will wash it carefully and then we'll dry the piece and we just about get to see the finished result. So this is the piece that's been patinaed, and you can leave it that way if you like. One of the things that I like to do on my pieces is I like to give it a more uh, burnished, antique type of look. And the way that I achieve that is I just use a little bit of steel wool, um, just a very fine grade, and I just gently do a little bit of buffering to it. When you're doing the lines in between, be careful not to scratch the glass. Step 14, applying the stained glass finishing compound. This will add luster and protect the lead and the patina. So you just put a little bit on a cloth and just lightly put it onto your piece all over both sides. You'll let the product dry for a little minute or two and then you're just going to buff it off. You see that the finishing compound has dried with a white film on it. So now you just take a clean cloth and you buff. Just keep rubbing, rubbing, rubbing until you get all of the white compound off on both sides of your stained glass piece. The final step with our stained glass piece is cleaning it and it actually is a bit of a time consuming step. Now that we have everything done, I use my light table, sometimes I use a window which is what you may be using, but you can see that there's little bits 
of solder that are stuck onto the piece. So I use an X-Acto knife. I like to do all the edges and clean all of these out. There's little bits of, of wax compound in there. So between using this, I like to use Q-tips, a little bit of fresh soapy water, and I go along each, each piece, both sides, and I clean away until I'm happy with the result. Use a cloth, use whatever you want to use, and keep cleaning each little section until when you look at it, you do not see any leftover residue, wax or flux or anything like that. Once that's done, you've finished your piece. So here's our finished piece hanging in the window. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little seminar and that it's been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.